Hello everyone, welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video and today we are going to be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Avengers Infinity War Thanos Build-A-Figure Wave Proxima Midnight. Here we have Proxima Midnight in the front window box. We have on the side here some artwork, same thing on the other side. We have the Avengers logo on the top. On the back we have a product shot as well as all the other figures needed in this wave to complete the Thanos Build-A-Figure. And up here we have the read-up, a lieutenant of the Black Order, Proxima Midnight serves Thanos in his quest for ultimate power. And on the bottom, we do have the UPC code, so you can check with your local retailer to see if they have it in stock. But enough about that, let's get this open and take a look at Proxima Midnight. And here is Proxima Midnight outside of her packaging, and holy cow, is this a big figure. Uh, I feel like this has to be the biggest female uh, character we've ever gotten from Marvel Legends, uh, aside from any build-a-figure uh, larger scale, which I can't even think of any right now. Yeah, this figure is massive. Uh, seems to be very well sculpted. Uh, I always try to make sure that my reviews are fresh out of the box with as little uh, you know, corrections as possible. And you can see the tip of the spear there is a little bent uh, from the packaging. I'm sure that's something that could be easily resolved through uh, just a hair dryer or something like that. But yeah, this is a, a big looking figure. And my first impression seems, uh, she seems pretty sturdy and uh, looks like it's gonna be a decent figure. So. We'll go ahead and get a better look at that spear real quick, and, uh, and then we're going to get a better look at Proxima Midnight herself. So real quick, Proxima Midnight does come with two accessories, one being the torso for the MCU Thanos, which we will look at when we put him together, the other being this spear here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's actually a, a very large spear. Uh, you can see you know, in scale to my hand there, it's definitely big. There's not a whole lot going on to uh, not a whole lot going on with it in terms of paint detail. Uh, it is one solid color, this gold color. The sculpt work seems okay. Uh, I actually haven't seen the movie yet, so I feel like this actually might be some sort of blade. Uh, obviously, you have the staff portion, and then it goes down into this mechanical-looking trident. Uh, and like I said, I don't fix these out of the packaging. Sorry about the cat there. Uh, so this one is a little bit warped, but, uh, you know, again, nothing that I imagine a, uh, a blast with a hairdryer wouldn't fix. So, pretty cool. I mean, again, some extra paintwork would have been nice, or maybe some even extra detailing in it. You know, that the handle or the shaft there of the, uh, the spear is very, very plain looking. And, uh, and then you get, like I said, these sort of mechanics here. Again, would have been nice for some different detailing, but... Yeah, but let's go ahead and get a better look at Proxima Midnight herself. Getting right up close here to Proxima Midnight, we can see some of the finer details here of this head sculpt and the paint uh, apps on there. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good looking sculpt. Uh, again, I, I haven't seen the movie yet and I haven't seen too much other than some promotional material for Proxima Midnight. So I can't say how accurate this is, but it looks good. The line work there, when you have the... Uh, I guess we'll call it light blue. It's almost a purplish hue of her skin tone uh, on her cheekbones there as it goes up. The line work looks pretty good. Her eyes look good. They don't seem uh, too out of place. That pupil on uh, her left eye, screen right there, looks like it might be looking a little bit off into the distance and it's a little bit bigger, but not noticeable from a distance. The little orange specks that you get there on her forehead and uh, going up her horns, uh, look pretty decent, you know, pretty simple. Uh, you can see a little bit of separation here on her hairline from uh, where the hair is uh, glued on, but that's not too bad either. And the sculpt going around, ears look fine, hair looks good. It's that uh, purple color, and it looks like it's even got some detailing in there, some you know, maybe a dark wash going on. So not too bad. A little bit of flashing there, yeah, from the mold. But yeah, the, the head doesn't look too bad. Continuing down the figure here, so we got uh, some shoulder armor there, which I believe is glued on the torso rather than the arm, which we'll kind of cover during the articulation point, but nice gold color there. You can start to see the pattern here that exists throughout the, uh, the figure, uh, this swirl pattern, which is uh, essentially her... Uh, armor or not her armor but her uniform has this pattern to it but going down we got some more armor sculpted on the bicep there some decent line work there where the white meets the black it's not too uh too bad looking 
And we got a little bit of overpaint there, it looks like, on the forearm, but that's not too bad. A little bit of line work that's misaligned. Again, not terrible. She does only come with the two hands, so she has this gripping hand, and then she has this open uh, palm hand with a little bit of armor plating. That armor plating does hinder some of the articulation. And she's got a little, going back up real quick, she's got a little bit of a spike there on the uh, that forearm, so... And going down, nothing too fancy again, just some standard paint work. And we get down to her legs. Same, you start to see armor uh, on this leg, so it switches. A uh, little bit of marbling effect there. Almost, uh, almost looks like a crack, but yeah, that's nothing too bad. And then the feet came out okay, so she's got the the armor plating on this side for her arm and then back on that side for her leg so overall not a bad looking character though and when i said proxima midnight was a tall character she is a tall character uh she's coming in here at seven and a half inches tall she's actually her spear is just as tall as her so her spear is even taller than your average marvel legends figure so definitely definitely a very imposing uh, character and real quick to cover articulation, so you do have a head that turns from side to side, does get a little bit hindered here by the hair. She can look down very far, her hair does kind of stick out and flare out like that, but she looks down very far, cannot look up very far because of that hair hindering it. Her arms do go up, now this arm will go up higher than the other arm because of that armor, and same thing with the rotation, it does stop, but of course this arm will fully rotate but this one is going to stop because of that armor she does have a bicep swivel double jointed elbows she does have of course a uh, hinge that can swivel and uh, go up and down but on this arm it cannot go back because it is hindered by that armor plating that she does not have on this arm she does have a diaphragm joint here that can go around crunches down not very far Crunches back, not very far. No waist articulation. She has legs that can come apart that far. Can kick forward very far. Can kick back, not so much. She does have an upper thigh cut. Double jointed knees. And she does have a up and down and ankle pivot. And again, just taking a look at the, uh, the scale here. We have Proxima Midnight next to what is arguably one of the larger body molds that we see with Angela standing next to Sue Storm with the standard adult female body mold and then the teenage body mold with Spider-Gwen. And yeah, I mean, Proxima is almost a whole head taller than even Angela. So again, it's a very big figure. And here is Proxima Midnight standing next to the rest of the figures in this wave that I have reviewed. You have Taskmaster, Iron Spider, King Cobra, Captain America, and Songbird. So that about does it for this review, guys, and yeah, that's a pretty cool figure. It's very interesting to get a figure this tall, uh, not as a Build-A-Figure. Uh, I definitely can understand why they wanted to have Thanos as the Build-A-Figure for this wave. Uh, I'm thankful that we didn't get a Okoye and Mantis-style Build-A-Figure where it was Proxima Midnight. But yeah, very cool. Uh, it's interesting that you know we have to have essentially a, uh, a giant in order to get double jointed elbows on a female body mold. But uh, this is definitely, like I said, this is a very big, bulky character. The articulation's not bad. I kind of wish that even though it's a female body mold, we uh, get the same sort of diaphragm joint articulation that is common with all the other female body molds. We don't ever seem to get that waist articulation. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but, uh, you know, it, it would just be interesting. I'm wondering what the reasoning is behind that. But uh, otherwise, the articulation is not bad. You can do some pretty good poses. I have her kind of in a jumping down pose here. And a fair amount of attack poses and stuff like that I could get her in. So definitely a good figure to get if you are looking to complete that MCU collection, especially if you're looking to get the Infinity War figures. And uh, otherwise, yeah, not bad. So as always, guys, if you did like the review, please hit that like button. If you agree with me or disagree with me, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you agree or disagree with. I'm curious as to your thoughts on this figure. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this coming your way. I am going to try to get into some of the multiverse reviews and some things other than Marvel Legends here uh, as soon as I wrap up this wave. But uh, hit that subscribe button for more content coming your way. I really appreciate it, guys. And other than that, have a great day.